Hey, Vic, how are you? I'm very good. Right, so Dara Mose. Now, we you were, were on the... Oh, my God, how many years ago? Did three I or four? Three or four years ago? Oh, my God, it was ages ago. Yes. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'd normally say, what do you do? But you've already said that one before. But um, <laughs> how would you... Yeah, just say for the people who, never, who don't know who you are, which, um, you know, there might be a few. You never know. What do you I'm do? Sure plenty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I say so I'm I guess I I'm a researcher, podcast host, um photographer, although it's been a while since I've picked up a camera in in um in proper intent. Um yes. and uh yeah, that that's it. We've got an author as well. I've published a, a book this year. Yes. Um a, a real interest in I guess the the paranormal, the other, the world of magic and the spirits, and and I, I tend to look at those things through the lens of folklore. Yeah, 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 cool. So, I want to talk about your book because it's, a, it's an interesting project. I think. Um, t- just t- tell tell us about that, and we'll, we'll yep. let it roll from. There. So, um, the the book is is primarily um an exploration of um an inspirational and disruptive force um uh which is referred to sometimes as as the the dark man um mm. and it, it, it's one of these um I, I guess one of the major archetypes really um and one you could kind of associate with the well you can associate it with the folkloric devil you know, yeah. um, and it's, I guess, the area of, of the themes of the book that's probably of, of most interest um, to, to you in terms of the theme of, of, of your show is uh, I make the argument that it's uh, a force that inspires creativity. Um, mm-hmm. So it's a force that comes in many names, the the devil, old scratch, um, the dark man, the the man in black, the black man. In other languages, it's in Irish, it's on far darker, the far dove. Um Gwynap Nude, I would say, is 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 kind of a Welsh um expression of the same um the same current. Um so there's many names, many faces. Um and it is it's a, a primal and quite often terrifying force, but it has uh, a clear link to creativity um and inspiration and we see that again and again through um through folklore um both modern and old and indeed through the experiences of of uh, of moderns who've uh, brushed up against this force this force is interjected in their lives in some way so it, mm. it seems to be kind of a, a driving force that initiates some people into a magical practice um specifically it seems to be associated with with witchcraft but also um through inspiration through the creative drive it it manages to inspire storytellers um or just more broadly artists you know in the world of music in the world of 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 um of of writing of of really all the artistic endeavor we find this archetype play out um again and again mm. you you did this uh the, you did the, the book launch in uh, treadwells in london yeah. and um and i was i said to you afterwards i was just about to say about the um the crossroads story with because somebody yeah. had mentioned something about yeah that link with um uh robert johnson and yeah you know, and and in the book that i I've written about sort of creative thinking. Mm. I tell the story of Robert Johnson as a story of him meeting Mm. 
the dark man um and and it was you know the triggering point of of what made him special yeah and and i said to you the you know because i wanted to ask you about the link that say in irish folklore that that has with the fairy you know the mm-hmm. the, the 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 stories of the, the fairy world and that link with great harpists mm-hmm. and everything and also there's there's a similar thing in in um sort of islamic tradition with the jinn yeah. offering that you know the trade off that people mm-hmm. become very so what's your cuz you know i see that as the same you mentioned it like a current yeah. and i see that in a lot of things mm-hmm. um what's your sort of what's your sort of take on that well robert johnson's story is probably the most famous example of mm. of this um inspirational force playing out in, in the most direct way that uh correlates with um the world of witchcraft right uh, or the world of, of of magic more broadly yeah. so for those who don't know um johnson was a a blues guitarist a le- legend has it that um he went to the crossroads to petition uh, the dark man um to give him what he wanted um the dark man took his guitar tuned it handed it back to him and with that he got talent success lovers money right um all in exchange for what they had negotiated now the legend says that it's his his soul um now and I'll get to the fairy point but just to kind of kind of uh really frame some 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 context around Johnson is that his influence is huge so if you look at kind of some of the great kind of like luminaries uh in the guitar world you got Keith Richards you got uh Rob Plant Bob Dylan Eric Clapton all citing Johnson as an influence right mm. and then uh, it's hard to know what exactly Bob Dylan was saying with this bit that I'm going to go through but it seemed to be a direct correlation <laughs> to what Robert Johnson's story um, kind of uh, relates to. Uh, Dylan did an, uh, an interview in the early 2000s on a, an American show called 60 Minutes. And he was asked, you know, because he's, you know, he's pushing on, you know, why are you still touring and um, still performing and what have you? And he said, it goes back to a destiny thing. He said, I made a bargain with it a long time ago. Um, and I'm holding up my end. So he was pressed on this kind of, you know, what do you mean, you know, who did you make it, this deal with? And and Dylan laughed and said, um, with the chief commander of the of this earth and the world you can't see. Now, you ask any kind of um occultist or esotericist, um, and they'd be like, I think I know who you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's not very coded. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And particularly like a phrase of chief commander of this earth. Yeah. You know. Yeah um are are very telling um so this that takes us right up to kind of like you know the relative present day mm-hmm. now within um within fairy lore within irish folklore there is a quite robust vein of the greatest pipers or indeed some of the greatest tunes that the pipers uh yes. airs that they, they 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 have composed were the result of um working with the fairies in some description so you have stories about some famous piper will fallen asleep under a tree and being taken to fairyland where he was taught particular air right or was given the skill to play the pipes in a way that was otherworldly beyond Mm. human capability Mm. that's repeated right that's um a very strong um theme within irish folklore you'll find variations of that kind of story repeatedly so much so that pipers would start to claim this kind of thing would have happened to them or mm. suggest that things that they, they had composed, you know, mm. had a fairy origin because of the connotations that were associated with, you know, that they had this otherworldly talent that connected them to the other world. 
Um, now, this is not just an Irish thing. Like there's um, in 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 the Balkans in um, in in, in parts of Serbia, there is a very mm. strong um kind of version of the fairy fate that still exists amongst the Vash people. Um, yeah, and um, I interviewed a lady called uh, Dr. Maria Vojvod. Um, yeah, I heard that one. Yeah, a couple of years ago. And yeah, she, yes. yeah, and she spoke to there was a a boy, uh, a man in the village that um. She did a lot of her, her research in a very remote, remote place, hard to get to, um, who was said to have been a piper who was essentially bedded by the Queen of the Fairies because of his pipe, because of his talent. Right, right. I am and as a result, like all the kind of all the, the, the local girls were interested in him. You know, you know. Um but again, it, it comes down to this kind of thing where the fairy kingdom is seen to have a deep appreciation for pipers and music and indeed can bestow this talent, you know, and again, you, you pull the thread on the folklore, you know, when people get taken to fairyland, you know, one of the things that happens is they're, they're at a dance. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're in a celebration, a party with, with music. Um, so this is a recurrent theme. And in terms of the the jinn, their association tends to be with inspiration of poetry, right? And the ability to recite, to create, to write poetry. So they're very similar areas. Um mm. and yeah, this seems to be quite a a, a robust theme within this area. Mm. Mm. See, <clears throat> the interesting thing for me with this is it's the, the the creative and, and obviously because with the, the, with the book I use a lot of I talk a lot about cut mm -hmm. up and its origins were well, obviously it's you know mm -hmm. probably to do with Dada and all the rest of it but you know the, the, where I take it from is William Burroughs and, and Geisen and and right. of course th those two guys were magically orientated anyway. Um, sure were, yeah. It's the disruptive element of those things that are sort of counter to the the logical way that we think within mm -hmm. society and and also how we think that the creative process works and maybe that thing about the dark man is it is absolutely that um subversive aspect of thinking where everything is turned on its head and you often see that within people who do you know creative things who will do exactly the opposite of what people think is the thing to do even yeah. if it's just being like the rolling stones thinking oh mm -hmm. you know we're gonna just do this and it doesn't matter how long it lasts for yeah um against all the best advice yeah um and and of course then it just has it imbues it with that the power of um, the subversive character you'd saying about this the, the the lad in the Balkans who that all the women are interested in him mm -hmm. as well. There's that sort of deep sort of sexuality about. Oh yeah, yeah, mm. and that goes with the territory, I think, as well. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, um, there's a primal quality to this. You know, um, and the like that that kind of almost the methodology you're describing of I'm going to do the direct reverse of convention. Right? I'm going to go against the grain in in whatever that might be. Um, it, that has a primal quality to it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and indeed, there's a certain amount of I think. I mean, people often talk about creative energy and, and kind of magic and creativity being very much intertwined you know and, and I, I i see that too right i, I yeah. get you know um if anything you know when we when we talk about magic the fundamentals are you know i speak or i write something that i want to come into being right yes um yeah in a very simple way but broadly that's kind of your territory the creative process it, i mean is literally identical for for those who are writers, 
you know, um, but extrapolate that only by a fraction and you're into songwriting, you're into music, you're into art, right? You're bringing something that was intangible and making it tangible, immaterial and making it material. And you're the mm. vehicle for that. Um, mm. to, to do these things, right, to, to do these type of activities, really when you examine it, has very little kind of merit in a world of pure rationale, you know. Absolutely, you know, <laughs> absolutely. It, it, yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're throwing the the pail into a well that is very very primal, you know, heavily symbolic, right? Yeah. And, and pulling that out and bringing it into the world, um, and look at the look at the 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 people who do that, you know. In in all honesty, do they strike you as very stable people? No, no, <laughs> they're not. Absolutely, you know. absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. I mean, you know, I used to I used to do a lot of talks for the one of the guitar institutes, and um, and talking about this sort of creative process. And when people would talk about a lot of the a lot of the people there were were teachers, and they would talk about their pupils and. And one person said about, well, I've got this lad and he's, you know, he's obviously got some, you know, mental condition. And I said, well, hang on, whoa, 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 hang on a minute. Mm. You're not telling me that any anybody in this room who sits down and practices for four or five hours a day isn't mentally unstable. Yeah. Right? Because it just depends on your viewpoint. Mm -hmm. Because it seems ludicrous that you should spend anything worth doing you, you have to be doing something rather ludicrous mm -hmm. to make that thing happen, whether that's, you know, getting up early in the morning and going mm -hmm. swimming to become, you know, to develop your ability as, as a, as an athlete or something like mm -hmm. that. It, it's just not normal behavior. No, it's, it, it's not. And, 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 and I would, I would hazard that there's a slight difference in say, if we, if we make two kind of streams where you've got, the example of that kind of person developing uh, uh, an athletic prowess to become champion in something or, or you know, be an Olympian, whatever that endeavor might be, right? As opposed to a someone who's, who's in a creative field of some description. Now, this is, there isn't some, Huge assumptions yeah. here, so please forgive yeah. me. You know, and no, no, it's okay. me. But one has immense amount of discipline and drive, right? I think mm. the other has a compulsion, you know, and there, I think there's a separation between the two. Well, that's an interesting point because I would have, I would have said there's a compulsion as well for people to become great athletes. I, I, I imagine there's, there's. People and I would also say there's a d discipline yeah. for people who wanted to become a really good musician or or mm. or artist that n knows that they have to learn techniques or whatever and practice yeah. them, practice them, practice them until they mm -hmm. get them right. But you see, none of that is normal behavior. No, none of it is. It's all it is all extreme behavior. Yeah, and it's that sort of thing about the extreme behavior and the things where you're not you're not listening to the the sort of the dictates of society and the, mm -hmm. you know, almost like the dogma of, of mm -hmm. how we believe things work. Um, and that seems deeply transgressive, I think. I, I agree. And I, I think it's one of these things as well, that if you look at, if you look at somebody that's particularly in the vanguard of some artistic movement, whatever it might be, you know, I mean, you, you talked about kind of like Dadaism, you know, like, any of those kind of vanguard movements, irrespective of what you think of them, those are, you know, they're they're at the bleeding edge, you know, and or, yes. you know, you look at someone like Van Gogh, you know, he wasn't celebrated in his day, you know, it, it's literally decades later before his work is appreciated and he's seen as, you know, the 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 kind of um, master that he's he's, he's viewed as. Mm. Um, and um, I think there's a certain amount of chaos and and like I said, those primal forces that 
run through people. And I and I talk about it being kind of like daemonic forces. The people's yeah. de- daemons are 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 kind of the the the, the aperture that goes through people to bring this yeah. stuff out. Um, but there's also kind of a you know a, a generational thing. And if you look at kind of like the like the, the Renaissance like drive for like unbelievable levels of 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 skill and capability to represent the yeah. um, the, the human form in, in realistically or proportionality in buildings, all this kind of stuff, like in, incredible capability. Now, all that existed yeah. before, you know, up into the Roman era, then we have to go to the kind of the, 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 the broadly term, the dark age, and then it comes back up in the Renaissance era. And there's a focus on beauty and perfection and all that kind of stuff. And then we get to kind of our, our um, late 1800s and photography arrives. And all of a sudden that kind of ability to replicate the real loses value and we get into kind of your your impressionist your monet and and and, and all that kind of stuff you know it has a number of different expressions and pointillism and all that kind of stuff um mm-hmm. it it has this kind of slippery quality to it so mm-hmm. you would think there would be a kind of a direct line or or these are things would fade away so now that we have we at that time we had photography well why do we need art you know now that we have AI generated art, why do we need artists? You know, if you're looking at it from a rational perspective, yeah, exactly. That yeah, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. You know, but then you look at something like AI art, and some of it is amazing. Oh, what technically fantastic. It's you know, it's the hallucination of a computer, of a machine. Yeah. Um well, a couple of ways of looking at it, but um yeah, yeah, yeah. But without, it's a way of looking at it, yeah. Yeah. Without kind of spitting hairs on, on kind of what AI is, it doesn't necessarily speak to people. No. Equally, if you're an artist, you know, why would you stop doing that? You can't. You can't stop being an artist just because, exactly. you know, exactly. there's no requirement, quote unquote, for it. So it's speaking to something deep within us. And I'm yeah. something that I believe is, is very much a kind of a, a primal force that some of us um have a you know uh a a, a deep and powerful current coming through us you know yeah. uh, and that's not always a good thing you know it's not always in the best yeah. interest of the person you know it, it, op- it often comes with a lot of kind of destructive qualities because this stuff is so powerful particularly if you don't get it out if people don't get it out like um, there was a, a fantastic um, fantastic guy called um uh, Jeff Thompson, who's on my yes. podcast a few times, and yeah. he's um, he's he was a, a doorman in Coventry for many years and kind of taught martial arts and like you know very realistic stuff, super super violent and confrontational, you know, and he kind of prided himself on the realism of this stuff, and then he had these kind of like revelations where he was doing a huge amount of reading, read all the great Bibles. Uh, of all faiths uh, and digested a lot of the learnings from it uh, and kind of realized the reason he was so prolific in this martial art, the reason why he was such a successful doorman was because he was afraid, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. and and kind of he, he became hugely creative or he tapped into his creativity in a way that he didn't before, you know, where he... he 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 famously wrote his autobiography, you know, in in toilet breaks at work. You know, he'd go in and write a couple of, a couple of hundred words and do this, you know, over a year till he had a manuscript. You know, um, yeah, he found that well inside him. But but he spoke about creative energy as a famous, well, not necessarily famous, but there's a I think it's fantastic, right? There's a there's a video clip of him um teaching what he calls his master class, and he talks about creative energy saying like if you don't get it out if you don't express it it goes mm-hmm. inward right and if it goes inward it will it will it will rot you or burn you from the inside out and that's why you got people yeah. lopping their ears off to you know go back to yeah and go so you have to get it out you know yeah. but to get it out you need to be your vehicle needs to be robust you know yeah. you know and, and he describes it that he's a fire hose he can take the pressure off it. He will 
create and his years of, of martial arts training and discipline has helped him build that and I guess you know marrying the two points of discipline and compulsion he can manage that and as a result he's written dozens of books he's a BAFTA a BAFTA for short film he wrote you know has, has done all this fantastic stuff you know and he talks about like I was on the factory floor mm. you know um, and has gone transformed his life entirely yes you know yes. Um, yeah that's that, that's amazing because you know I, I again I, I listened to you uh, the, the episodes of Spirit Box when he, he was on there and um, and it's almost like there's more well there's obviously more than one Jeff Thompson, if you see what I mean. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Because uh, it's, but you realise that obviously when people are really creative, it, obviously it's the Renaissance man, isn't it? it's the polymath. Yeah. Um, or I should say the Renaissance person. But um, but it is that sort of thing that we can be um, anything mm-hmm. within our capabilities. Yeah. As, you know, we don't know what our creativity is going to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I think often when you get the 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 sort of like the positive thinking thing, you can be anything you want to be. It's not really a case of that. It's a case of you can be lots of different things, but it, they're already locked inside you, and you've got to let them out. It's not it's not mm-hmm. the intellectual thing like oh, I want to now be a mm-hmm. you know a racing driver or something like that. It, it's just how your life takes you in the direction when you start to allow that to happen, which is an interesting thing. So the question I was going to ask about the, the book was, when did you realise you had to write that one? Um, if I can broaden the question to start with, and then I'll get, get on to, to that. I knew I had to write a book when I was about 15. So I knew I was going to You're write right. a book. Okay. I was always going yeah. to do that yeah. one. Now, whether I'd be successful in 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 getting it to to be published is a different story, mm-hmm. but I, I I had one book that I wrote over about fifteen years that is a manuscript which has never gone anywhere. I, I think I could have wallpapered the house with the amount of rejection letters I got. Yeah, from yeah, it. yeah. You know, yeah. that's just the way it is. Maybe we'll revisit that again. Um, and I had a um, I have another one that's pretty much there or thereabouts, but probably needs some work, but. So the compulsion was always there, mm-hmm. right? So that's hours of writing, hours of of, of drafts, uh, while life happens, right? So yeah. compulsion. Um, this one, um, when I kind of first started noticing the archetype in folklore, it immediately kind of grabbed my attention. You know, I, I kind of I, I I think from from reading so much. And from structuring my own stories, I started to kind of understand kind of patterns in stories, mm-hmm. archetypes, drivers, arcs, story arcs, all that kind of stuff. Um, and like in, in university, I, I studied like semantics and semiotics and there's a certain amount of, you know, what is the emotional meaning versus the the, the, the literal meaning and um, mm-hmm. like the symbolism and all that kind of stuff in there, right? So there's all that kind of stuff was in the bag and, you know, in, in, in kind of the, the backstory. And, um, yeah. and then that combined with, with my own kind of exploration into magical worlds. Um, this theme kept coming up and up again and again and again on, until it kind of became a personal thing in my life. And I just wanted to write it, you know, um, and once I kind of wrote my initial proposal and draft chapters and got them off, um, I, I still didn't really know. You know, I had I had an idea of like, well, the later chapters will be about this, but maybe they won't. You know, I I still hadn't solidified everything in 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 my head. And um, when I got my commission and contract to write, I then kind of began in earnest grossly underestimated the amount of time it would take me 
Um, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Peter yes. Mark Adams um was very generous um and he wrote my introduction for the book and um essentially said I think you probably need to double the time you said you get this done <laughs> and um turns out he was absolutely right and I think I needed kind of another two months after that to to complete um but once I started writing um a lot of it sort of falling into place pretty quickly now there were mm couple of chapters that were more laborious than others right um and i would say those were the ones where i wasn't connected to mm. that flow wasn't connected to that yeah um thing that was bigger than me right yeah. and there were others that were done in a week you know and they're superior you know right so it's it's like in in and you hear a lot of people talk about this, you know, where they're going like, well, I know when the thing switches on, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. Whatever, whatever that thing might be, we have all different terms for what that is. But I can certainly see in my own writing and in my own kind of like ideas and how ideas would link together in a coherent mm-hmm. way, kind of when that when that flow is there and when it isn't, right? You know, because mm-hmm. when it isn't, it's really hard and it's. Yeah taxing and it doesn't quite work you know um or i'm not really sure what i'm trying to say you know um but when it is it can go straight through me really quickly yeah. you know yeah but the flip side is i'll be exhausted by that i'll be like you yes. know absolutely shattered totally drained yeah. you know it will yeah. it, there's there's an exchange for, for that there's a price you know? i you know what you were talking about that the Jeff Thompson quote about you've got to let that out, otherwise it can burn you from within. You know, yeah. I was thinking, well, that's really the you know that type of um, thing of the muses and you know how mm. how people express that experience of uh, creating, mm-hmm. and that they were being taken over. Yeah. Um, and also sometimes the deal was really quite challenging mm-hmm. or even deadly in certain cases. Yeah. Um, so it, it is that sort of thing where you say, you're saying about how shattering that experience is of, of actually creating. I mean, God, yeah, I, I, absolutely. <laughs> um, and it's sort of, you know, the, the, the nearest comparison I can draw for people who have never experienced that. It's like walking around an art gallery, isn't it? You haven't been very far, but you're absolutely shattered by the experience mm. of you're overwhelmed by it. And mm. um and it's sort of a bit like that. It's like, well, you know, why is it that? but it, it is an energy thing. Mm. I know it, it, we, that's the trouble. You know, we talk about, you know, energy, but that's a bit it's a bit amorphous, isn't it? But there is something yeah. about how you get drained by by the experience, even though it even yeah. Going well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I, I think this goes back to like, is your body, your corporeal form, ready to be the vehicle for it? You mm-hmm. know, like, um, and this is kind of a a weird thing that I probably I've never actually really spoken before, but on the run up to do to doing this writing, I was like in the gym, like again, I had this kind of real drive. I need to get strong. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, like doing all this stuff like you know like lifting like doing proper lifting stones and all that kind of stuff right getting strong and um and something that something in me knew that i was building the the body to be able to manage the what was going to come you know um and i that might be very kind of alien kind of left field thing for people to 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 no, take. but i'll get that i totally yeah. get that yeah and because again if you think about the greeks their idea was you know to have a perfect mind you had to be in a perfect body type mm-hmm. of thing you know mm-hmm. the fitter your mind your body was the, the fitter your mind was going to be yeah. yeah i mean that seems absolutely true because mm. all your mental faculties are improved by yeah yeah exactly exercise, exactly you know and yeah. extreme exercise particularly lifting weights mm. you know it's mm. Mm. It's again, it doesn't on the surface, it doesn't make sense. 
mm-hmm. you know, logically from mm-hmm. the way that we would think about it. Um, but in in actuality, you mm-hmm. know, it's obvious that it would. Yeah, yeah, and and but you, but equally, like you look at the flip side of it, you know, and, and what happens when it's not going well, you know, when people yeah. self medicate and have huge addiction problems, yeah. you know, it's like. Yeah. Yeah, and you look at the world of music, and you got things like the the Twenty Seven Club, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, the Twenty Seven Club. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, like um, and like um, oh, what is it now? Jim Morrison has an interesting um epitaph on his on his on his grave in in Paris, and it's related to this. Let me let me uh, look it up because like my memories is terrible. It's you know, it's in Greek, so. I, I think I'm get away with. Something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, grave, um, and it says, um, "Kata ton demon etiof," um, and um, which means. Um, true to his spirit or true to his own demon, Daemon, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's like basically, you know, I, I read that as like I I followed the path of my daemon had laid out for me, you know. Yes. Um, yeah. and his story is is very familiar, you know, to 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 the world and in in how sometimes that kind of daemonic influence can can play out you know mm. i mean young mm. spoke about being in the grip of the daemon you know he spoke about that kind of compulsion to 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 do whatever it is he needed to do you know and and, and in certain areas you know like he, he he spoke to it kind of like not being easy you know um i he said something along the lines of like i had to obey an inner law that was imposed to me and left me no freedom of choice you know, I uh, and and like a, a creative person has little power of his, over his own life. He is not free. He is captive, and he is driven by his daemon. Mm. You know, and he, you know, and he was mournful about that. Mm. But but equally, would he have been young without it? No, yeah. you know? he wouldn't. Have been. Yeah, because I think that the thing is that again, you know, it's possibly a complete illusion to think that we've got any control over our lives anyway. <laughs> just think that we have, right? Um, it's yeah, just totally. that it's more obvious. It's more obvious that you haven't got any control when yeah. you're creative. I think that's yeah. more, maybe the more more the case. Um, but uh, again, it, particularly in this society, everything seems to be like the idea that we've got an answer for this. We understand how this works, which is obviously utterly false, because we always think we have an answer to something, right? Mm-hmm. And, and nowadays, it's just that stuff where, you know, science has certainly become a new sort of religion in the in the general sort of yeah. community. And um, the the idea that we, we know how things work, we don't even understand how consciousness works. I mean, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, mm-hmm. and we're dealing with an area or maybe the great ocean of consciousness that we don't know mm-hmm. anything about with creativity mm-hmm. and you know we will put those ideas about it the information is coming from another place i mean mm-hmm. that's a bit of a sweeping statement but it's that type of idea that we can't we can't know it we can't yeah. under, you know we can't know that thing so in the book then dara but with it some which were the most startling things that you that you well, the, well, the, there was there was a couple of really kind of uh, revelatory you know moments in it that were um, for me personally were hard to deny that, that the fingerprints of something other was was there but um, there was a, a particular chapter that I wrote about rewilding the self right yeah for me and this kind of return to kind of a, a you know kind of more 
primal state of being. Mm. And, um, you know, when I sat down, I didn't know what I was going to write, you know, um, but I wanted, I started, the idea came to me of like, well, talk about kind of the earliest known human expression of creativity, you know, mm. of, of like our, our ancestors in the cave, you know, yeah. um, and then I spoke to this piece of art uh, called The Sorcerer. Uh, yes. Yeah, discovered by a guy called Henry Brule. And Margaret Murray, um, in some of her explorations into uh, in, into witchcraft, um, some, uh, her academic treatises she wrote in the 20s and 30s, like The God of the Witches and The Witch Cult of Western Europe, um, she spoke to to that um that that piece of art i didn't know that um i found her reference as a kind of a, a by reference to that piece of art mm -hmm. well i was looking at it in terms of like well this is a very similar to the horned god or the therian tropic um mm -hmm. type of of um image that is associated with sometimes with the dark man where he can be horned or half um half beast you know, from the waist down will be cloven hoof. So um, much like Pan, much like Serranos, all that kind of um, expressions of that type of um, deity, right? Yeah. Um, so that kind of linked my thesis to the cave, to the expression of being kind of like that compulsion to 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 drive through, uh, through art. Then Literally that that week while I was writing that piece, I was in the British Museum, picked up a uh, bestiary, like a tourist one, and I just opened it, and that was the piece of art I opened on. Right, and hairs in the back of my neck go up. Um, mm. I'm due to interview the Scarlets, um, for their their chapter in the in the book, the interview with them, and in preparation, I was reading uh, Peter Gray's Apocalypse of Witchcraft. He talks about that piece of art. So it's like so specific that I got my kind of bell rung twice on it. And, and I was like, okay, right. Well, you know, I, I've clearly been led here. You know? Yeah. Um, and I can, I can give you another one here. After the Tread Wars, thing, um, when I went there, I thought, well, I, I won't buy the Alan Moore book that came out, which is the, yeah. The bumper book of magic, right? Which is this sort of like a boy's own manual about I've, I've magic. Seen, I, yeah, I've seen the cover of it, I haven't figured okay. It. So I ordered it the next day and it was delivered on the day. Oh, wow! So the next day, yeah, and I opened it up, and the opening story is about you know, some hunter who gets injured by. A deer, and then it leads um, to him going into a cave with the the people because obviously he's sort of delirious. Yeah, and he paints that picture. Wow. It's in the opening of the book, and it was it was My following on from your yeah. talk. And I just and I nearly sent you a message, to yeah, because you 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 spoke about that obviously. Yeah, you and I just thought, well, that's a good one. That's uh, yeah, yeah. You know, who is most definitely yeah talking yeah uh, it, it, it absolutely yeah i think so and uh, like uh, and it's in some of like robert robin artisons um yeah, yeah. work you know which again I, I subsequently found out and um that so it's telling us there's something about that piece there's something yeah. about that image that has power on a very primal level that we're drawn to repeatedly yeah. that it it it's demanding of us that we yeah. pay attention to us. It's demanding yeah. of us that we speak about it, you know, yeah. um, and that's extraordinary. It is extraordinary. And, and, you know, there's lots of things you could look at and go, you, you know, it is the contacting the, the animal in yourself mm -hmm. and it, you mm -hmm. could do this and do, and there's multiple meanings in that. Yeah. In that picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is why we need art. Because yes, language just doesn't. No. it just doesn't touch the sides. Is exactly you know? why we need art, and in fact, that's an interesting 
that you should say that because now, I mean, I've been teaching music or encouraging people to play music now for oh, nearly 50 years. And over the last few years, it's become, because I've seen the effect that it has on people, elderly people who learn to play a musical instrument, you can see the effect it's having on their ability to remember things. Oh, wow. It's really quite profound. Yeah. And <clears throat> obviously for younger people, they're being denied access to musical instruments. And I think, you know, you can't be a critical thinker without being able to think uh. left field. And you can only do that with art, really. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, the the power of of music, particularly now that the, the the little blip in history where you could make money as a musician by recording and all the rest of it, because it was only a blip in time. Yeah, yeah. Um. So it's like, well, let's go back to what music was and is. Mm-hmm. Let's forget about the the fame and fortune thing and celebrity and stuff because it's not about that yeah um it's about this sort of ability to communicate on a deeper level with yourself and other people Mm -hmm. um and i've been pushing that envelope more and more in the last few years and i absolutely Mm -hmm. think that's where we've got to go because Mm -hmm. the world has changed very rapidly for for people particularly in music i mean you know the very fact you can produce your music and and whatever almost on your own Mm -hmm. Uh, but you don't have that sort of selective process that you would have had if you had a record deal and all the rest of it, you know, yeah. and, and that sort of financial clout. So the thing is that the the true nature of art, we've got to go back to sort of pondering that and, and to get to grips with what that is. Because, you know, I, I definitely go down the Alan Moore route about, you know, artists are shaming them. And shame that are really artists, you know. Yeah, 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 totally. You know, art is magic, and mm-hmm. um, and it, you know, it changes the world. The very fact it's mm-hmm. it's there, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, amazing. Um, so mm-hmm. what what else have you? What's your next plan with all of this, or or have well, you got other things? Well, well, just just to kind of to to close that thought, man. That's why the book is called Song of the Dark Man. Yeah. Right, because it's about his songs being sung again, yeah. You know, uh, and and I, and I come at it from that 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 sense of the storyteller, you know, around the hearth with the community, yeah, performing the story, you yeah. know, um. But yeah, I think that's we're definitely kind of on the, on the top of the same thing here, um. Yeah. In terms of what's next for me, um, um, I've got a a couple of ideas uh, that are kind of nascent. Um, I've already started scribbling one down, so that's obviously the one that wants to come out next. Um, around you know similar areas, but it'll be around kind of like gin fairies and and what yeah. have you. Um, that's kind of where I'm gonna go. I think next. Um, oh yeah, I've started to work through my chapter structure and kind of what's going to be in it, and that's generally how it starts. So, um, that's how you do it, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it'll just be like books and books of notes, and um, then it'll uh, start to come together. Um, but I mean, like, it it takes a while to kind of get, I, I have to build my battery up before I can kind of take it on again you know because when i finished this one i was like jesus christ i'm not doing that again that was <laughs> uh, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah you know like uh it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was really you know towards the end really tough really draining and then kind of like emotionally really hard when i finished it like it just kind of um strange you know um this was kind of like kind of a bereavement but but like uh just yeah immediately found the process of finishing it brutal um but next for me i I, i'm yeah that's probably going to um start to um solidify i also have kind of um um 
ambitions or notions as they'd um notions. Uh, as they'd refer to them back at home about um <laughs> you know maybe making a short film in, oh, cool. in this kind of area so yeah i've got to um figure that out how we're going to approach that but that's what i'm thinking you know um i've been doing the podcast for about a four and a half years and so that might kind of um start to kind of uh peter out as i kind of pick up other projects because mm-hmm. um, you get to a point you think well maybe i've said what i want to say now you know yeah it's tricky isn't it yeah um i've actually sort of sort of instead of having a, somebody every week mm-hmm. I, i've had a period of time where it's been like oh you know have a little bit of a break and then yeah you know a couple of people on and whatever and then another little gap whatever because again you're right it's like well I could obviously be interviewing guitar players mm. forever, right? Yeah. But it would yeah. be just very boring, apart from other, you know, yeah, or other guitarists. But um, and to try to get that that sort of mix of different perspectives on what being mm-hmm. creative is and being able to see things in in a different way. Mm. And sometimes, you know, I just have to think. Well, I got to just get get step back a bit for a while. Yeah. I don't think we you you do need to do that, don't you? It's like oh yeah. Yeah. left to say, you know. Yeah, totally. Yeah, mm-hmm. and th- I think that's it's a really important thing to consider with this. There's ebbs and flows, you know, yeah. and sometimes there's there's nothing there, and recognize that it's okay to retreat and rest. You know, that's a good thing to do. You know, it, like um, I think when you get into the place where yeah. you're in that position, you're trying to keep going. Yeah, it doesn't work out well. No, <laughs> it's probably something telling you, and we, yeah, we'll just leave it. Yes, <laughs> that's brilliant. So, thanks so, so much, Sarah. It's really good. And I, as usual, you know, I'll put some things on the podcast. And if, maybe cool. if you sent some links, yeah, uh, I've probably yeah. got them everywhere. But yeah, it's just it's just the, the the link tree at the bottom of my. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Got it all. Awesome stuff. All right then, mate. Brilliant. So, Great yeah. stuff. Speak soon. Literally. Yeah, cool. And I will. I will let you know if there's any because I because I have been have to go to London now on, yeah. on Thursday. So if there's any things that will yeah. delay, it, I'll let you know and we can yeah. reschedule. Um, I'd really like to talk to you, know, kind of your ideas on creativity as well. You know. Yeah. To go yeah. through that too. Yeah, that'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah, that'd be really good. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Cool. Great. All right. Nice to see you, Vic. Yeah. D- don't disappear. Just oh, sorry. hang on a bit after we stop. <laughs> All right? Okay? Yep. I'll just stop the recording, then I'll quickly mention something to you. All right. Cheers, mate. Mm-hmm.